call this meeting to order uh, the November 23rd Community Planning and Development Commission meeting. Uh, so first up on the agenda is the approval not required plan for 116 Lowell Street. Um, so Jean, any background you want to give us on this? Um, this is, as the town engineer puts in his memo, uh, sort of a unique situation where uh, two surveyors worked on the plan and um, they realized there needed to be an adjustment. This was the plan that was before you at the last meeting. And quite simply, they agreed on the, the new lot line. And so we have a amended plan and it's on the, the line uh, at the western end that is just a very slight adjustment. I even brought the old map if anybody wanted to take mm -hmm. a look at it. Which one is it? I was looking at it earlier. And here. This one here. This one here. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure which one got adjusted. I thought it was this the this one, the you detail want to three. Walk us yeah. Dave? Oh, yeah. Oh. Dave, yeah, yeah, please. Dave sure. could probably do the best job to explain exactly how this came about. It's the slide. Line right here, you can see oh. that there's a, um, a, a record distance and a survey distance that's up on the legend in the left hand corner. So, on, on record, the distance is 70.97. Um, when they did the survey, it was 72.23, and so they adjusted that. What happened was we, we did our survey. Um, I was explaining this a little repetitive for Nick. Um, we went, we took all our control to the right, all, all the Bancroft property went to the right around uh, Cape Cod Ave, and we closed our, um, our traverse there. Uh, it just so happened, you know, the, that wall's been there for 350 years, but at the same time, Andy Bramhall was doing work for Mr. Stonkis, I thought I said Sconchus, um, Stonkis, and all his control from, this was all the old child's property, it was all the other way, so when these guys met in the middle and they were out there the same day, <laughs> what, what the, no, no, they were the same day, but then uh, one, a couple of them went, uh, my guy went back the next day. They found that they were off a little right at this point, at this point only. And wow. so we, it, it wasn't a lot, sure. but a for a plan that's right, that's yeah. going to be recorded, we said we should amend it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it's really the best thing to do. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Excuse me. Oh, hi, hi. <coughs> I can pull up the old plan if that would be helpful. It's like a foot. It's not even. Yeah, I don't know. No, it's explained. What was that? It's well explained. The two surveyors started from different points, and when they got to the one point, they were off and they resolved it. So they fixed it. Right. Fixed it. All right. Sounds good, yeah. Any other questions or comments on this one? An A and R. A little bit of a do over. Oh, yeah, yeah we got to break up the pen. That's, right. <laughs> That's for you if you'd like. Oh. For Tata. Do you have room over there? There's space up here. Uh, sure. Should we do a quick vote? Move that the CBDC endorse the uh, A and R plan for the uh, revision for the property at 116 Lowell Street in Reading, Mass. <coughs> All those in favor? Thank you. All right. Thank you. We have it.
Thank you. Right, Appreciate it. All right. Next up is the Economic Development Action Plan draft. So, Gene, I'll turn that over to you. Thank you. Sure. Um, so, I wanted to bring this to the board tonight because oh. this is um, the culmination of about a year and a half worth of work that we've done with the help of um, the Metropolitan Area Planning Council. And uh, we started this back when we were in the midst of the rezoning project um, because we realized that, um, you know, it, having a little bit of planning in advance of making zoning decisions um, is, can be very useful. And with regard to some of the areas that um, we've been focusing on as redevelopment areas like behind RMLD, um, before we get into that zoning change, which we um, have on the horizon for the PUDI, um, we thought it'd be helpful to really get a good, really opportunity for feedback from the community, visioning, and some planning that um, <coughs> was part of what was done here in the Economic Development Action Plan. We had three public forums, and um, we really focused on the area behind RMLD and did some urban design work that could frame up what it might look like, one scenario. And at the last public forum, we actually had um, those that attended, and I think we had about 75 people attend, um, go by with yellow post-its and write comments about what they liked or didn't like with the plans that had been drawn. So, um, so that's long and short of where this all came from, how it came about, and why we spent such a long time uh, working on this plan, because we really wanted it to have a, a robust public comment and public participation element. And by having those public forums, we feel like we could have an opportunity to, to get that feedback. And the visualization would, <coughs> images would go up of this type of building or that scale of development. People got to really um, express how they felt about that. And that's incorporated in the plan. <coughs> and, um, I guess the key to this plan now is some strategies going forward. And there are four uh, priority development areas that we've been we've identified in this plan and we spent some time on prior to this plan as part of a regional effort and it's basically priority development area one is um, downtown and expanding the 40-yard district and sort of 1a and 1b with 1a being um, expanding it out towards uh, like the Washington Street High Street Washington into that node um, and then 1B being crossing the railroad tracks where the 40B is going, um, and including that site with Doucette and uh, some of the other uh, closed businesses over there on the corner of uh, Washington Street. Uh, yeah, Washington Street and uh, I can remember the other one. Um, so that's sort of priority development one. Two is um, South Main Street, mostly. We, we looked at the end that's walkable to the downtown and to the train to think about could something else happen there that might um, have a potential spin off to, to what's going on in the downtown. Um, and then three and four are three being the primary area that we looked at behind RMLD and four being one general way, which is a, the commercial district with Market Basket. So those are the geographic areas, and, and the, the, the summary table, I think, is where really the meat of this uh, plan comes together. Uh, we do identify a vision, an economic development vision, and then we go on to an actual kind of, okay, um, what are some of the things that could happen in these different development areas and then strategies and actions in there are, I think six strategies and four um, PDAs pr uh, priority development areas and the strategies are sort of all the things that we've talked a lot about here which is enhancing walkability and connectivity between and within the priority redevelopment areas 
um, coming up with some branding and marketing so that we could solicit interest, attract interest uh, from developers, businesses, um, and potential customers. And this sort of gets to something we talked about when we did the EDSAT, which is who's marketing Reading? And um, so there's some strategies that go along with that. Um, some other strategies talk about it supporting existing local businesses. So um, some sort of a local, whether it's a partnership or a business group that could really um, coordinate events. And we've got some of that happening now. We've got the Fall Street Fair Committee and we've got um, Shop the Block, which is coming right up next week, a uh, week after. Um, and we've got this cultural group, but some cohesive entity that maybe it's a Main Streets program or something else. We've looked at some other models and, and trends that are going on in this area. Um, but again, trying to come up with a cohesive way to pull a lot of what's happening now together and maybe even make it stronger. Um, the public-private partnership is another strategy and that gets back to, you know, maybe there's a way to come up with gap financing. Um, maybe there's existing groups or resources that would um, dedicate some interest in Reading. And, um, and then something that we already do, but maybe taking, taking a stronger look at that is facilitating redevelopment opportunities that require parcel consolidation with multiple owners. And that's something that we did with um, 258 Main Street, the old bridal shop, you know, suggesting, and I think it was Dave's suggestion to say, gee, maybe you might want to look at one of the other parcels next to you and assemble a bigger site. Mm -hmm. So um, that would fall under that category. And then the sixth strategy is really um, build community and activate the public realm in downtown Reading through this cultural economic development and placemaking. Again, we do a good amount of that now, but taking that to the next level, maybe thinking about becoming a creative, um, a cultural district, um, spend some time looking at that. Maybe maybe it's time to weave it all together and, and see if it could, could take off. Um, so that's more or less the key components and then um, we go through and have a bunch of kind of how could this go and um, what could it look like and you know the, the real question is do we do this through a partnership effort do we think about enhancing town staff um, where are the resources now to to take this these recommendations and begin the implementation and that's pretty broad question. We're going to have some discussion at the Board of Selectmen meeting on December 1st. So I don't know if we'll answer that question there, but we'll certainly have some discussion about it. So are you, by having this on the agenda tonight, is that a request for feedback? Yes. Well, I wanted to make sure everyone had an opportunity to be aware that this is kind of where we're at because we've talked a little bit about it. Um, it's posted on the website, and the comment period is, is until December 1st. So um, anybody who has comments, we're glad to receive them. They're going to go to MAPC, who is um, the author of the study. And, um, and so it's a nice opportunity to just give it one last look. Can we send it to you guys? or You could. OK. Yeah. I'm, gonna, I'm happy to collect them and then send them off to MAPC for her to incorporate. But yeah, sure. <clears throat> you just had a table up there of modeling estimates. There it is. Just, I've only made it through a few pages, like 15 pages of this, but is there anything in here that gives an idea of how those estimates translate into revenue, tax dollars? That's a good question. I I thought a little bit about that. We'd, we don't, we didn't take it to that extreme, but, but that is something I would think um, could be a relatively simple exercise to say this is what it translates into. The problem with that is you also have to think about what the impacts are. Right. I was just, yeah. So right. it's, it's to, to give it, to do it fairly, you would really want to assess both the upside revenue stream and then 
what we always know is going to be the development right, impacts. Right. I mean, we could put a number to that, but it's kind of, it's not, there's no science to it. Sure, sure. Hmm. something could happen, like our, like we did with our 40, with our downtown smart growth. But I'm wondering if there's anything in here that's, that helps us react to a development that are outside our control. So, you know, we set up, we expand the 40 R, 40 R, right? <laughs> yes. We expand the 40 R and we get two potential hits on that, let's say. Really good properties up with a good plan, it's mixed use. But right next to it, we're getting a 40B shoved down our throat, which is gonna have impact that we didn't plan for. So how do we react to the impacts that we don't plan for? And I don't mean, you know, what a little restaurant comes into town. I'm talking about something significant. Yeah, that's that's the trick, tricky part about a, a 40B. Um, I actually, reached out to town council last week and said to him, you know, what should we be doing to get ready for this 40B? And um, there is money available at the state for some consultant services to, um, to help us go through it pro forma as well as um, just to review the plans. Um, but with 40B, you know, there's some ability to comment, and certainly, you know, whether it's this board or people individually could go to the Zoning Board of Appeals meetings and provide commentary that could hopefully ultimately result in some conditions that the Z Zoning Board of Appeals would place on the, on the project, on the comp permit. But the trick there is if there are so many conditions that it becomes onerous on the developer, then they have some ability to push back on that. So it's that right balance of trying to be, trying to shape this project so that it's better, but not pushing too far because if they w say they denied the permit, we all know what happens at that point. They go back to the HAC and the 99.9% .9 of the time, the HAC overturns it and so then you just get what they proposed and so just like we do with site plan review we try and give thoughtful comments and and um, and try and shape the project it would be nice if we could do that with the 40b um, ideally that's I think where we want to end up yeah I didn't even mean I didn't mean how do we get comments in on the 40b what I'm saying is this guy's going to put in 70 units there. We were planning on 70 units spread out right. in our whole district, and now this thing comes in, right. which we can't control. How do we then slow down what we just set up for other people? Because then we're just growing too fast. We know we're just going to have all the congestion and traffic problems that we are trying to avoid. Well, That's why I'm saying, how does, this, how does this plan help us react to developments beyond our control that yep. increase some negative that we we're trying to control. If we can get over the hurdle of the 10%, if we can even get the one year pass, which I think is about 55 units in one year, we'll get full, if those 77 units go in as rental, which is what, is what we think is gonna be, that could give us the ability to get a one year pass. Yeah. On 40B. We've done a lot of planning. We've been we really have. proactive, and it, it's just come back and bit us because we have no control. Yes, we did reject, the state did reject some f smaller 40B somewhere yeah. else, but um, but with all we've done downtown, they still don't care. They're still letting this go forward, and so I don't know that our planning does anything for us, frankly. I know. It's just one of the, it's like the, uh, <laughs> It's like the cell tower zoning we were getting at. It took me a while yeah. to get used to that. You know, you're writing something that you might not have a lot of control over, and it's the same thing here. I, don't, I just don't know how this, I, I guess I'd want more control somehow. Yeah. I know. I mean, I 
I think this sort of thing assumes, right, kind of pie in the sky. If everything works in our favor, this is what we can accomplish mm -hmm. if the right strategies are in place. And we, we don't have control over everything. We just don't. Yeah, that's probably the wrong word because then it makes it sound like I want the town to have control over everybody's private property. But it's really not. No, you mean. It's, it's setting up good planning right. that then people can come in and use as guides to develop what they want as opposed to 40Bs, which, which are really um, <coughs> very onerous for a town to deal with. Yeah. Well, that's what's great about the, obviously, the 40R smart growth, it just makes so much sense because you can do dense development, but through the CPDC, it can be <coughs> a development that's going to fit Reading. Right. It doesn't bypass zoning, but it's flexible. And that's, that's ideal. Um, and it's too bad because the 1B, we, we, got, we went probably four or five months into this planning process, and we even had a, um, we even had a model for what a development could look like there. We even, you know, kind of did a, vi a, a visioning of, of what that scale could be and what that style could look like. Because we, we agree, dense development makes sense there, a la 40R. And then the, the rug got pulled out from under us with the 40B. So much for planning. <laughs> but I still think it's worth including in a 40R district because who knows what's going to happen? Projects get permitted and not built all the time. Um, th th I think this table, the one that you had up before with the potential, the zoning potential, is really sort of the key to thinking about this from a, um, I mean, as this board should be looking at this sort of ha as it plays in with the master plan. Right, that's our. That's really our charge. Um, I guess you know. I, I hear all the time it is about how uh, how much um, residential development we're getting. Every 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 part uh, parcel that's developable gets developed residentially, and partially true um, <coughs> part of the thing is that's the market um, for Reading um, uh, well, but not, not just for Reading no, yeah no I this really this general um, this general area but I guess in thinking about these and how these priority development areas fit it's great to think about them individually but shouldn't we also be thinking about them I mean, uh, what if they all um, uh, developed with, as we as we show here, with the dwelling units um, as mixed use, I, and what uh, Nick is talking about? Someone else comes in, not only with the seventy units, seventy-seven units, but whatever else you know, the, all the ones that we've mm -hmm. heard about. Then we're even tipping the scales even further. To um, to residential and and limiting um, uh, commercial development in town because these couple of areas here have been developed with more residential. I, I don't know if that means you know I, I, without getting into the details is this residential added to commercial you know sort of like what we had have down the street here on Haven, you'd never have gotten multi-story mm -hmm. commercial development. It's just the market's not there, so it's it's added. Um, you know what I'm mm -hmm. what I'm getting at is thinking about this sort of as a um, townwide direction. I don't know if that's in here. I, I yeah, just I sort of. I think that's that, that strategy at the end that talked about, you know, well, who's marketing Reading? You know, if, if there is a group or a somebody who's a champion of saying, you know, somebody that's 
in the know, you know, oh, I don't know so-and-so is looking for such and such, you know, we got this going on in Reading or that going on, or, you know, something even more sophisticated like a database and information on the website. You know, we, we all know that the first thing these companies do, we heard it from Professor Bluestone from Northeastern, is they go to the website. If they're looking around, they want to say, okay, well, what's, let me go to this website and see what's going on in the town of Reading, if there's any kind of incentives or financing or development opportunities or zoning changes. Developers call me all the time and say, you know, I'm, I'm looking at such and such, can you tell me if there are any pending zoning changes that I could take advantage of or I should be aware of? So if we had, not to say that the website is going to solve everything, but that's a place that we can do a lot better and really capture, and we're working on that with our new administrative services director. That's going to be a lot better. So um, it's figuring out where we can do better so that we're connecting well with the ultimate goal of where we want to end up. I mean, this carves out a little bit of a scenario where we could end up, and then working back with saying, all right, well, how do we get there? And these are some steps that we can take to be more in a position to draw in more commercial as opposed to just residential, residential, residential. Um, and what's good about it is that we've, instead of just saying, oh yeah, we, let's have more commercial, we, we've actually taken the time to say, well, what could that look like? What density might that be? So that somebody doesn't come in with a plan and everyone goes, well, that's not what we wanted, you know? Right. <laughs> We're kind of giving them the answer to the test right up front. Like with the Main Street design guidelines, which a lot of developers have used and have said, this is great. Now I know what the town is looking for, so I don't have to waste time going through and then come back and say, oh, I got it wrong, you know? I mean, they could sit down with me and I could say this, this, and this, but they're not, it's a lot more powerful if they see it in some sort of a guideline or, you know. So I guess the long answer or the short answer is um, this gives us a, a little bit of a roadmap of how to get there. And so I think that's, that's going to be the next big challenge is how are we going to execute? Well, the, um, I'm not sure that there is an execution phase for us, per no. se. We, the to collectively. We, we have, we have to, to uh, come up with a, a current, currently final version of the plan and right. publish it basically I mean instantiate it and beyond that it's um, wildlife management <laughs> you know, see what see what comes in and see how we can match them up with uh, with elements of the plan when you describe who's marketing Reading is that I mean is the intent there to kind of look at the work that the EDC did and would this, who, whatever we decide for who's marketing Reading, would they kind of carry on what the EDC was tasked to do? I think that's something we're going to talk <coughs> about with the Board of Selectmen. I mean, um, there are so many different models for how it could happen. Um, at the <coughs> end of the report, almost at the very tail end, there's a little bit of a summary of the different models that we've looked at. And the Main Street's model, for example, in the city of Beverly has worked very well for them. I, d I don't know if that'll work here in Reading. Um, there, there are a lot of examples of partnerships, you know, the downtown partnership. Um, Lawrence has a big partnership effort. But all of these models have an infusion of talent, funding. I think to expect a volunteer board to take this and be able to accomplish what we what we want to get to is an awful lot to expect. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, I think yeah. that it, it, the town has to decide. We can do it that way, but the town has to decide if we really want to get to these goals and hit a few, we're going to figure out a way to come up with resources, how whatever that might look like. And maybe it's the private sector stepping in and saying, look, you know, we're happy to jump in. I, I know in Wakefield, a local bank came up and said, here, here's seed money, and we'll be the champion of this Main Streets program. And so, again, pulling resources together to fund the effort. 
<coughs> whether it's in kind, you know, some sort of financing, combination of both. Maybe it's more staff. I'm not, you know, it's not always the magic bullet, but um, other communities do have economic development planners, staff, um, and somebody at town hall could be updating the website with what's happening and transactions and this property's for sale or this property's for lease or, you know, there's a vacancy here and, you know, this is how we want everybody aware of it. Um, just having that, I think, is a good tool. Mm -hmm. The, uh, just a little, you know, out of, out of nowhere thought, uh, which colleges in the area have um, urban planning uh, curriculum? There's a lot of them. Um, and I mean, could could we can we offer Reading to the colleges as a place of, uh, a place to focus or to cooperate with? I mean, because that's the kind of thing where you, we can probably get some some talent and some, and some thought without necessarily spending any substantial money. The, I find that the graduate students seem to have a little more of a, um, in some cases, even a background in this kind of thing where they need to do an internship or whatever. Mm -hmm. Certainly undergrads, we have, we have an undergrad intern, and she's great. Um, but if we really wanted to um, give this set of tasks to a, an intern, a graduate level intern well, from one of the programs around here would probably jump all over this. Yeah, I mean, I was thinking more of, of um, shaping an opportunity yeah. that we could uh, offer. Yeah. And it's, because one of the things, I mean, the commercial versus residential, one of the um, things that needs understanding, if not study, if or both, is, you know, how many residents do you need to support X amount of local business? And what's the 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 synergy or, or the uh, symbiosis? I guess is the right word. Uh, because we are the town is essentially fully developed. Um, obviously, you can increase the density in various areas, both um, on the residential side, which you know we've been uh, observing. But uh, to a, another extent, there's some opportunity on the commercial side. If you can uh, articulate the cooperative nature, you know, if, if you have more people to get, does that mean you've got an opportunity for more business? If you've got more parking, if you've got better transportation, uh, they interact in, the, you know, multi-dimension And it's, it would be a very interesting uh, to see what some of the uh, up-to-date, if you will, urban planning or, or the academic approach to it, what they might come up with. Mm. You mean like a class project kind of thing? Or class or individual or, or how, however. Yeah. I mean, I don't know what the... I know Babson um, did something recently for the <coughs> town of Milton where they drilled down and looked at this kind of thing for economic development mm -hmm. for the downtown. Yeah, but I mean, but it's the, it's basically community development, not necessarily right. uh, one business or residential or, or whatever. I mean, there's obviously the 40 B's are profit driven. I mean, it's opportunity and, and profit uh, motive. Uh, commercial is much more of a risk because the smaller businesses uh, tend to have a shorter lifetime. And our downtown is physically challenged by the fact that the Haven Street corridor is, unless you're really that familiar with the area, you really wouldn't know what's down there. Mm -hmm. So the ability to have enhanced wayfinding so that if it 
were, I don't know, an arts district or a shopping district or a whatever you want to call it, at the top of Haven at Main Street, when those 20,000 cars going by, you could announce there's something going on down here with some attractive, um, you know, well-designed message um, that could get people's attention. Hmm. LED reader board? <laughs> <laughs> exactly what I had in mind. Exactly. Wise guy. I'm sorry. Uh, just two quick things. On page 12, there's two bullets. Reading is ready for your business and doing business in Reading. I'm familiar with the, the second one, but the first one, I guess I... Maybe I heard about it, but I'm not sure. But where do we stand with those? Are those ready to be reviewed? Are they in draft? Are they done? Yeah, we, we were working hard on these um, before Jeff Jesse left. And so juggling everything, the, this plan took precedence. Uh, we do have drafts. Um, they need a little more work. And I'm hoping when Julie starts next week, she can jump in and... Is that an update for? That's an update. Okay, good. <laughs> That's a teaser. Nice. <laughs> Julie. Excellent. Yeah, so that we're working on them. Okay, cool. Thank you. So I guess the uh, the ask here is for us to review this. Yep. Send feel, feedback to yep. you. Send it to me. I'll pass it along. All right. And if you want to join us on December first, feel free. Be before the Board of Selectmen um, talking about this and talking about the various models for an economic development organization. And the feedback is due on the first? Yes, please. Okay. And mm -hmm. then we can incorporate it into, give them enough time to get it into the draft and, and then we'll be releasing the final, final form of the document. What's the target date for that? Um, I think I think we have to have everything done by the middle of December. We're on a contract with the MEPC, oh, yeah, okay. cool. so they want to wrap it up. Good. Any other comments or questions? Anyone from the public? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you. Thanks, guys. All right. Next up, planning updates and other topics. All right. We have a new person starting a week from today. Her name is Julie, and she's from the uh, Harvard Graduate School of Design. Recently graduated, uh, worked for the town of Concord for about four years before she returned to graduate school, which might um, remind you of our previous planner that did the same. Did, is that what, did Carol come from? Carol came from Concord. No, no correlation it's just the way it worked yeah. out I don't even know any did they cross <coughs> I don't think so yeah I don't think so so she's excited cool and thrilled to join us good so it took a while but we found her <laughs> <laughs> yeah a couple of tries was that networking that we were able to find her or just um look at the draw I think it was timing. I think when we first advertised in August, the timing was way off. People were in summer mode. Mm. And when HR re-advertised it in September, I think people were back. And they have a new website, Indeed, well, new to us, Indeed. And then we got a really good response. So between the timing and this, this other website, I think that made it work. Good, okay. I did network, but unsuccessfully. <laughs> <laughs> well, the timing, I mean, my assumption would be you may not be as busy as you were. I mean, judging just from the agenda. So maybe you can have more time to... Well, and to we have a busy, busy January coming up. Um, we have um, a lot of the applicants weren't ready because I told them I'm gonna need a little extra time to get ready for meetings, so I put out deadlines, and they couldn't make it. Um, so even something as simple as the sign that we had talked about, um, they just didn't, didn't get the stuff in. So 
I think it's going to get super busy after the first of the year. And uh, Criterion right now, I don't know if I mentioned this last time, um, the schedule is that they're going to be before this board on January 25th. We probably should talk a little bit about that because um, there's been some discussion with town council about having a joint meeting mm. between the HDC and the CPDC. And um, clearly we need someone to chair that, so I would suggest that Jeff chair it and however we set it up. I know we've only maybe done this a couple of times, but um, the feeling was whatever comments came out of that meeting, um, HDC being here, they could respond as well if there was any need to, to do what they need to do, so. That's what, where we're heading. Okay. Is that something to discuss now, or do we want to? If you like. <clears throat> what do you guys think? Is something we want to take on now? I'm okay sitting on waiting on it a little bit. Waiting on making Just a decision whether it's whether we do a joint meeting or not? Yeah. Well, I'm pretty sure the applicant gave HDC a hard deadline, right? They're not extending beyond. They're not. Light. So if it if it gets the process worked out, that's fine. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not really opposed to it. I just to Gene's point, we just need one person running the meeting. The, um, I know because we had a, a few, a couple of joint meetings more with ZBA in my time here, and I, I think the one thing that's, um, uh, certainly I think in this one too, the one thing that's tricky is the two boards have different um, rules that they operate under and, um, and uh, uh, areas that they need to or should review. And so with our review, um, and the limits that we have and HDC have, I, I don't even know what process <coughs> and what limits they have. So um, making, I guess, if we do do a joint review, making it absolutely clear up front to everyone about what the differences are mm. um, and making sure that's, that's clear. I that, think, I, yeah. That can get really, I, that can get really messy. I, th my, I think what's going on is they want to be able to, however the plan ends up after this board reviews it, they want to be able to almost instantaneously take a vote and adopt that same plan so they don't lose time. So maybe this is a little more bottom line driven than some of the other joint meetings. Mm -hmm. I mean, the goal is to get to a plan that both boards are in sync with. Do they get they get to do that? I thought they already have done that. Well, the plan that they approved is now coming back to you. With the, and then the concern is if right if we make changes if we suggest changes are made and they agree to them then they'd have to go back to oh. it, yeah HDC right. and right. they'd have to approve that's that the again. problem. I see. So if you're in sync and you're meeting all in the same room, like no one leaves this <clears> room until <throat> everyone agrees and yeah. adopts this plan, then then you save time. What and is that deadline? Next point. The deadline? Ugh. I don't have it off the top of my head, but January 24th is getting real close. They, they couldn't make it to our December meeting, December 7th. They couldn't get the information in. And the first meeting in January, one of them is away for January 11th. January 11th would have made it a lot easier if HDC had to mm. meet again but they can't make it because one of the principals is away. So then okay. you, you down to January 24th. Well, so they worked out the differences that they had had at the last yes. meeting at the school. Yes. So I guess they would just be there to say okay or no to some change we might make. So it, well, could, it, it, it could essentially be our meeting with, I mean, we've done this before. Mm -hmm. uh, on the flip side, it's a board of, um, Board of Selectmen's meeting, we happen to be there, 
in the audience mm -hmm. offering up a, up opinion. Right. It's a meeting because we're we're all there. Yeah. After yeah. yeah, after we finish our stuff, we can give them time to do whatever it is what they I need to thinking. do. Yeah. As opposed to a actual joint meeting where sort of everyone's um, running with the agenda. Yeah. The mechanics of how you do it, I think, is pretty flexible. If it makes more sense to run it like we do a regular meeting, and then when you guys are done with your comments, open it up, you know, however you want to do it, I don't think there's a set precedent. Well, but it also sounds like the there's an opportunity for for uh, us to to go over the criteria and stuff in, on January 11th. Um, you say, you say the one of the people was was I presume there, one of the, the historic district commission people couldn't make it then. Oh no, it was the criterion, the applicant that can't make it. Oh, okay, that's too bad. Yeah, because if we could get you know some preview pre pre review. Um, well, I can get you the plans. They haven't filed anything with me yet, but I have a copy of the plans in the office from when the HDC reviewed them. Okay. If that's helpful, I can get those so you can at least see them. Might even be on the website somewhere. Yeah, because if, if we could get, uh, you know, sometime, yeah. like around the, the, the meeting on the 11th, to familiarize ourselves with what's happening. Yeah. Then the, the joint meeting could be a lot smoother. Okay. I think the area that's going to be a hot topic, and to your point, Nick, they, I, I, my understanding is, yeah, they've resolved their differences, but I think the exception is still with parking, and that's where we're going to end up spending most of our time. Mm -hmm. Or not. I mean, they've given us evidence, and right. we'll have to go down that path. That's the one area that I think may, may be the challenge. But yeah, I mean, I, I like the way that's described where it's our meeting, but they have a quorum. They call themselves to order, but they kind of provide, provide their feedback and input via the public comment phase of the meeting. Yeah. And I mean, I'd be open to them doing a presentation, kind of like we have been, we had last time, World 1867 right. organization gave a presentation. But yeah, that's probably how we want to handle it. <coughs> Everyone agree or any concerns yeah. with that approach? Yeah, yeah. All right. Nick, you good with that? Mm -hmm. All right. What Great. else do we have? Um, the uh, Bunratty signage. So they, I brought it with me tonight. If anybody wants to take a look at it, they haven't submitted all the information, but they submitted a, um, you know, a kind of a mock-up of what they're looking for. And um, so they want to come down the side. Their is concern <laughs> is that the yeah, business, huge. yeah. That the business would like more um, signage, they feel like they're hidden, and I, I think part of it, <laughs> I think part of it is because there's a big tree in front. Yeah, they, no one can see the building on the corner. They've got two complete walls with completely clear windows. You can see the gigantic screen on the back wall. And why don't they just do a blade sign? There are a lot of blade sign. I asked them that. Right there on the corner, the you know sticking out onto Main Street like the other ones do. Yep. Well, I said. You know, the master signage plan called for blade signs. Um, we support the master signage plan. <laughs> um, and I asked about illumination, and they said, oh, yes, we would definitely be illuminating this. They don't have the design ready now, but um, Seems, it seems to crowd it now. Now it seems to be oversigned, whereas a blade sign would give them plenty of visibility. They're, they're at a break. They're the widest alley with their, with their outdoor seating. Right. 
So coming from the north, heading south, your complete visibility of this corner. They've got a completely clear storefront and windows along the side. You can see into the restaurant. You know it's a restaurant. There's street lighting, plenty of street lighting in that area. So Not to mention, it feels a little unfair to the Pilates studio. Kind of <laughs> sucks up all their signage, which it is makes <laughs> it seem too crowded. And there are a lot of blade sign, which is would be perfect. They'd be, they would all march down the street. You know, all of the little businesses there have their little blade signs. So this is not in conformance with their master signage plan, right? No. And are they talking to the landlord about that? That's another question I asked, and um, that's why the, the other piece of information that I was looking for was the actual sign application, because on that application, the landlord signs and says, I'm, I'm in agreement with this. So I haven't seen that. And. Uh, Think it's and is there a precedent for us ever approving something that is not in conformance with the master signage plan? Well, um, it has to be a modification to the master signage. Yep. Oh, okay. Okay. Yes, we have done that. Yes, yes. we have done that. With the understanding that everybody, <laughs> all key players are bought into the right. Exactly. It's, it's kind of unfair to bring it before this board without the landlord at least yeah. saying, I'm okay with it. Yeah. Yeah. We, yeah. we shouldn't even see it. Yeah. We really shouldn't. But I feel badly <laughs> because they've asked for, you know, consideration, but they haven't given the information. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. There's a reason why we ask for <laughs> each piece of information, yes. not just because it's fun to get right. paper. <laughs> Can't really make a decision without it. <laughs> um, so does so that help you with? Yeah, that helps. Okay, good. Um, the other thing I wanted to bring to the board's attention is the um, newspaper advised me today that they were not able to, they had a mishap and didn't run our legal ads for the two applications that are scheduled to be before the board at the next scheduled meeting, which is December 7th. So we have a problem that um, we can't hear these projects now. Mm. Um, we we had sent over the request for the legal ad, I think it was November 16th, and got an email confirmation that we were all set, but there was, I guess, a production error is what they said, so they didn't make it in the paper. I've, I've never come across this in my six years here, um, but what it means is we have to maybe take our schedules out and look at maybe moving the meeting on the 7th to the 14th so that we can get That's the That's really the only way to advertise something is a local paper. Uh, what about the website? It has to be in a newspaper of general circulation. Well, I mean, I could make an argument that our local papers don't get that much circulation. I mean, you're not really doing the, uh, anyone justice by noticing it. That's we need cool. to come up to terms with the new technology little thing to the state house that obviously needs to change yeah it's, it's <coughs> keep up with the times it's outdated for sure what they've asked is if we could maybe schedule the posting of the legal notices three or four days in advance of when we absolutely needed to show so that if there is another mishap they can recover from it it's cer certainly fine by me but um, what else do we have on the agenda for the seventh for the seventh, we have the PRD for Van Norden. That's um, the one that we went to town meeting for last year. And we have, um, that, and that's a preliminary plan that the board needs to look at. And then the second thing is um, the old bridal shop, 258 Main mm -hmm. Street. So there are two projects that need to be heard. Well, I'm, I'm available on the 14th. Yeah. And what do we need? Do we need three, four? Five? All you need is three. There's nothing earth-shattering. Yeah, I'm here. Yeah. 
All right, thank you. That's very helpful. So we'd be moving the meeting? Moving the meeting from 12-7 to 12-14. Okay. Thanks, that's great. <laughs> Due to a newspaper failure. <laughs> okay. Excellent, thank you. So if the paper goes out of business, which papers are known to do nowadays, You'd have to go to some other paper, the Globe or yeah. It has to be within the county. So the Wilmington mm. paper, or the mm -hmm. so, so like Wilmington, Wilmington or Melrose, papers. something like that, something in Lawson. in the county. But then I, I could argue that nobody in Reading would see it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so the person affected by it, unless they were in a butter and were noticed, you know, by us. Well, for, for our own site plan review, I don't know that we're, I mean, we just say, run the, it's not that, site plan review doesn't come from the statute, it's a mm. local, so I don't know that there's any parameters even. Are there three papers in town? There's patch, but I think that's online only. And it's I don't know. If, it's weekly though. Uh, the Chronicle. The Chronicle's Advocate weekly. is the weekly. Advocate. Advocate. Yeah. 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 Advocate and the Chronicle. Do we publish in that? We don't because then you're even more restricted right. with when things have to be in and yeah. it only comes out once a week. Okay. So the daily ends up being, like I said, it's never come up in six years that I've been mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. So maybe if we schedule it so that there is a little bit of a recovery measure. Yeah. If it happens again, we can regroup. Okay. The, the page that the legals are on never, never got into, into press. That page in the Reading paper today was um, the Wuben Obits. Hmm. Hmm. I mean, uh, just the wrong page appeared in, right, somehow on the, on, on the, on the press. Uh, okay. and, Sort of an unusual thing. <coughs> I once upon a time worked for a company that did pre press um, control software. So I do understand. <laughs> well, I'm glad you do. <laughs> I'm sure I do. <laughs> and did you say you talked to Brad Latham? It's, it's really the applicants that I don't know if they're available either, you know? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. that's Good point. Oh, uh, it was Rich uh, Hagerty that was. He must have. Okay. Okay, Rich. Yeah, uh, he. I did get an email from somebody. They didn't give me their name at the Chronicle, and they said that they had spoken with Brad Latham, and he was. He had no problem with whatever we needed to do. Okay. Okay. Good. Hopefully, the applicants won't be away on vacation or something. All right. Anything yeah. else? I think that's it for now. You guys have anything you want to raise or bring it? Okay, you want to knock these minutes out? I looked at these. The only question I had, it seemed like all of the approvals, with the exception of the A&R endorsement, was us giving the town planner administrative, approving the town planner to administratively approve whatever the topic was. Is that what we did in the, in the meeting on that night, or did we actually approve things? Well, the Auburn Street, we did, we, it, it was a allow the town planner to administratively okay. approve. I remember that one. Okay. Fuddruckers. Fuddruckers and Anthony's, I just, I, I don't remember. I mean, we spent a lot of time on them. 
particularly Fuddruckers, but Okay, the last non-bold line on page one says the blade sign must have, I think, and should be an or be eliminated. Yeah, one of those two, just delete it, I guess. Under uh, Fuddruckers, it says awful, all four words on the sign are proposed to be illuminated. Wasn't it just world's greatest hamburger or something like that that was going to be illuminated and Fuddruckers was not? What, what were you going to say? Did you have a different? No, I thought you were counting three, not four. Oh, okay. Well, Fuddruckers is eliminated, and that piece used to project forward, and there were lights behind that yeah. Fuddruckers, and and they were lighting. There you go. So now there are no lights behind Fuddruckers. Okay. And I think that's what it says. All but four words are eliminated, and there's no extra lighting behind the Fuddruckers. Okay, so that's accurate. Okay. Mm -hmm. What's there? Thank you. No light will come through the background. I, I don't, I'm with you that I think we approved these two because both Fuddruckers and Anthony's because there was no, there, you, we weren't waiting for anything else from them. Correct? Um. For the Fuddruckers signage. Right. And we weren't waiting for anything from uh, Anthony's Coal Fired Pizza. Right. So we would have just approved those. There's no reason to have approved administrative. Although the, um, what I have in my notes is that th it wasn't authorization Because it was the the uh, the question was is this is this just a minor thing that can be done through staff once the board is okay with it? In other yeah. words, it didn't it didn't feel like it was something that staff could just say, oh yeah, no problem. That's you know, that's so minutia. It's not even worth bringing to the board. It was an illumination change to FUD records that we wanted to make sure we had right and the board was okay with, but it wasn't going to be something that the board would make a make an actual minor modification to the approval, but it would be just like a memo from me to the building inspector saying, yeah, the board's looked at this, they're fine. Right. So that's why I have it as a, an authorization to have the staff approve it. Okay. Kind of after CPDC is okay to. All right, I'm fine with that, that makes sense. What about Anthony's? What are your notes say for that? Um, this actually, uh, yeah, it has to do with the entrance, and that's a, I did that one the same way. Okay. Walker's Brook, I call it Walker's Brook facade change, mm -hmm. and it was the same thing, like a memo from me to the building inspector saying they changed out something on the storefront door and CPDC approved it, and it was it's fine, yeah. so that he knows right. when he sees <coughs> it. I remember this now. Okay. <coughs> Thank you. Okay, the last line of that, the there's a T-O-O -O instead of a T-O. Okay. So it's just those, those two spelling things, right? Typos, yeah. I'm good with these. Move that the CPDC approve the minutes for the meeting of October 19th, 2015, as amended. Second. 
All those in favor? Good job. All right. Uh, one other thing I just want to point out that there's a, a letter in your packet of correspondence from um, Ian Canini, Temple Street, and it's about the um, criterion. Summer up, just some of the concerns she had. In the packet. In the desk packet. This page. Oh, here we go. Okay. I think it's right before the economic development. Yeah, page okay, seven. Page seven, yeah. That wasn't what we were, it wasn't included what we were reading about? It wasn't included in the e, e packet. Okay. Cool. All right. Anything else? Move to adjourn. All those in favor? Pardon? Second. Second. All those in favor? Good. Go Pats. Yes. Right. Pats, have a nice evening.